his one question was, aren't you too small to be an outside? That's all he said to me for about three straight years. Not, nothing else. I never answered him once. It just pissed me off so bad. Perfect pass. And that's going to be a dead nail. Oh, oh, oh. There's a bouncer. I remember uh, a specific moment in UH gym at a, a volleyball camp where everyone was float serving. And I was like too bored with float serving. I was with little kids, right? And I went up to the, I, I don't know who our, you know, one of the coaches were. And I was like, when can we jump serve? And he's like, you can jump serve when you like hit five float serves in a row. I was like, okay. Do, 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 do. Can I jump serve now? He's like, yeah, sure, okay. And then I would just start going back and try to jump serve over the net. So did you always want to be a setter? No, <laughs> not at all. I wanted to be a hitter ever since I was 10 and my uncle said that I should be setting. Right there. I was like, screw that, man. Just let me hit. I think I started hitting my 12s, one year, my 12s year. And after that year, uh, my uncle Tony, our coach at the time, said that he wants to move me to setter. I was like, what? Oh, I love hitting, dude. But he, his reasoning, and I think maybe he was just being nice, but I was just too small to be an outside at the time, was that he said I was the, the best volleyball player on the court and the best volleyball player should touch the ball every play. And as a setter, you get to do that. But that was his nice way of saying that I couldn't play outside. At the time, I was like, oh, cool, man. I'm the best player. That's all set. I love it. And then as time went on and more and more, I just wanted to hit. <laughs> I was like, shit. This guy got me, dude. <laughs> I just want to hit. Come on, buddy. Come on, Patrick. All right, three ball. Maddie? And I was a setter kind of ever since. But I was in a 5-1 offense with Taylor Crab. Taylor Crab to Madison. Back to Taylor. Taylor wants to hit. He's been setting the whole night. And then we have basically nobody up with a one-handed back set. One-handed back set from Taylor Crab. And I I gotta say. Taylor, can you tell me what your nickname was growing up in volleyball? A nickname was the bug. Why do we call you the bug? Uh, I was always just the smallest person in my family and around my friends. All you guys used to just uh, smash me on the volleyball court and throw me around and bully me. Not bully. Oh, that's enough. My mom gave it to me originally because I was the smallest person in not just our immediate family, but our whole family. Taylor Crab is 5'11". Oh, uh, whoa. I'm legit 6 feet. You're oh, not 6 feet. Hey, hey, I would take measure. I'm yeah. What's the verdict? Okay, so he is six feet. <laughs> Told you. Our friends and volleyball players, and they started calling me up for other reasons just because I was the smallest guy on the court. Okay, stay down. <laughs> I didn't really hang out with volleyball players that were my year, so I got to play with the older guys, and it just taught me kind of how to beat these bigger, better, stronger guys, and that was just between the years, and that's how I was going to outsmart them and beat them. I thought maybe I was too small to go up against these big guys. Maybe I wasn't physical enough. But either way, I still wanted to play volleyball. Whether that wasn't being an outside, I still wanted to go play collegiate volleyball. It was after my 17th year of club volleyball, I thought I could actually make it as an outside hitter. Because that was actually the first year that I actually got to hit full time. I was an outside hitter when Micah Christensen came to Outrigger and he was our setter. I finally got to hit full time. And I thought I did pretty well at JOs as a hitter and that was basically like the big recruiting stage so I thought I could get recruited as an outside. Did any coaches reach out to you after that tournament? Mm, no. <laughs> Not really. But you knew. You knew yeah, you I knew. <laughs> Oh, I did good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get there. <laughs> I 
and I got recruited by you know some of the top schools, but they were unsure of what I was gonna play, I guess. They were gonna recruit me as an outside, but if you know I couldn't make it as an outside, they would put me as a libero. So there was like a, a backup plan. Deep down, I knew I was going to play outside. I was, I was going to make them put me at outside. I wasn't going to go play libero. Just like that coach who wouldn't let me jump serve until I made five in a row, I was going to make them put me at outside. <laughs> was there anyone who told you you, uh, you can't be an outside hitter? Yes. Tyler Hildebrand. That's all he said to me for about three straight years. Not. Nothing else. Just his one question was, aren't you too small to be an outside? And I never answered him once. It just pissed me off so bad. Even when I was at Long Beach playing outside and he would come help at practices, that's what he would say to me on the sidelines. Like, this motherfucker, dude. So, who is this guy, by the way? He wasn't even on the coaching staff. He would just come in the gym and help out, and that's all he would say to me. I was like, get this guy out of here. So right when I got there, I was kind of the third or second outside, like starting, not starting, and all the preseason stuff. Uh, and then after the Elephant Bar tournament, like I never saw the court again. So I was just benched. Uh, and after that, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I, I thought I was doing all right. <laughs> but then that just like, motivated me to get back in that starting lineup and I knew once I got that shot that I wasn't gonna let it go. I was, uh, I was still a freshman and it was one of our first games. We were playing UCLA. At the time UCLA was, if not one, I think a top team. And we were down 0-2 and they subbed me in. Then we ended up winning in five. Since that match, I started everyone since. During the whole season, like I, I never, I don't focus on stats or anything. But like afterwards, when you know, Knipe called me in the office and told me like the awards I won and why I won it, and like laid out my stats for the season. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't know I did that. Because you were set an ungodly amount. Yeah. Right? Connor did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> Connor Albright knew our system. And it was to set me in the front row and set me in the back row. <laughs> There's a stat he told me later on. He's like, there's this period of four weeks where it was the most impressive volleyball stat line I've seen. And you made two errors the whole four weeks. And that's including service errors, block errors, serve receive errors. I was like, I'm pretty sure I shanked more than two balls. But <laughs> but as a six foot hitter, what did you do? I think it's just, really understanding the game and understanding the situations you're in and making the right decisions. I mean, sometimes you have to create stuff and make it there, but you can't try to create something that's not there. And that's kind of what was my mindset as a smaller outside was that, okay, if it's not there, I, I don't have the strength and physicality to just go blow at high hands and get a kill. So I'd have to figure out ways to not score, but give ourselves another chance. My mindset's always the same, but especially when they're a bigger blocker, uh, I try to cue in on being aggressive, but also not being one dimensional. Because once you get one dimensional and you come in and start shooting, they're just gonna start delaying. And even as a smaller guy, like I'm not getting it up and over them. So mixing it up is huge. Coming in darting or swinging hard, just gotta mix it up or else they'll lock in on you and you're screwed if, as a smaller outside, they'll get you. 
the analogy I always use for Taylor, if any of you have seen Goodwill Hunting, when he's talking to Robin Williams and he's talking about his abusive foster father, who, uh, the abusive foster father lays out like a, a wooden spoon, a belt, and a wrench and tells him to choose which one he wants to get hit with. He used to just put a, uh, a wrench, a stick, and a belt on the table and just say choose. And Robin Williams goes, I'd have to go with the belt there. I gotta go with the belt there, Vanna. And Will Hunting goes, I used to go with the wrench. Why the wrench? No, I chose the wrench because F him, that's why. And I feel like <laughs> that's T. Crab's approach to blockers. Like the bigger you are, the harder he wants to swing because F you, that's why. That's why. 